trying to make the big case for certain trades at certain prices. We've done pretty good business there. So we've been uh, buying an awful lot of bonds, especially at the London Open at 8 o'clock. We bought into 198.12s. We got a high print eventually of 199.20s. That's a well over $1,000 profit for any bond traders. In terms of data this morning, um, where do we start? Uh, nothing of any real significance, but what we did see that uh, has obviously caught a lot of people's attention is the selling that's came into the euro. Uh, but that's on the back of a positive economic zoo. We saw some uh, eurozone uh, zoo sentiment. 25.9 prior was 20.6. Sorry, forecast was 20.6. And the German zoo, 31.7. The forecast was 20.3. Some very, very strong zoo numbers. Uh, but the euro just not having any love at all, same as the pound. We've seen some selling on the euro, we've seen some selling on the pound, dollar strength coming in, perhaps people starting to hedge some of that, what looks like dangerous exposure to equities at higher prices. I've been buying down ticks on bonds there, I just picked up some 14s and 15s on the bond, and I'm just uh, taking a bit of money at 16s and 17s just to manage my uh, position a little bit. I'm hoping to be able to retest the highs on treasuries, but I'll see how it goes. I'd have a stop at break even, so no danger whilst I'm in chat here. Stops at break even for me on bonds off the bottom pullback. Anyway, um, we'll cover this trade in classroom. This is the Sturs trade that we were talking about. And you can see, if looking at the Sturs trade here, you'll see why I'm interested in the long bond, because the Sturs traders are going to be trying to sell down the twos fives curve on this spike higher here. So the Sturs traders, one would imagine, are going to be trying to sell that down into this balance area and buying off the balance area. And that should hopefully lift the bonds a little bit higher during this period. And obviously, as I said, I've managed to buy some 14s, 15s on bonds. It's trading 16s, 17s. Um, so we'll see how it plays. Uh, but this is a classroom we'll do this afternoon, looking at the Sturs traders. And you can see at uh, 8 o'clock this morning, if you were to look at this from a uh, perspective prior to that drop, and we zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to recognize the blue line, orange line relationship. We're going to cover this in classroom. We're going to cover this relationship in classroom in some detail so that we understand what the short term interest rate traders are doing at all times. Because these guys don't have um, the connection to the inflation side that we would expect. These guys are more connected to the Fed funds rates. These guys are more connected to these very, very short term arbitrage uh, type trades. So these guys are, are, are more in, involved in, the, in the, uh, the rotational factor of bonds because they don't have long to hold these treasuries. They're short term treasuries. So they've got to make more active decisions in terms of these stories. So we'll cover that in classroom, as I said, uh, this afternoon. We talked about oil. We talked about the crack spread. We talked about some of these storylines that um, sometimes don't even diverge. Sometimes they don't diverge. Sometimes they simply set up all on their own. Sometimes they don't give us any particular strong divergence, but they set up even without divergence. And as much as there is still a definitely noticeable difference in speed of movement, like these purple lines dropping so far, so fast, against an orange line that, which is hardly moving, and a big, big volume surge. This is what we call volume and value at price. If we can see the purple lines different from the orange line, and we recognize that there is volume with that difference, that is the definition of volume and value at price. We just don't know what price it is. So when we see these as different, now when you look at this phase here, and I look at the purple line and the orange line during this phase, I don't really see any difference during this phase. So there's no trade for me, even though there's volume coming in. I don't see what the trade is. I don't see any strong storyline for me to take advantage of here. So for me, it's a case of staying on the sidelines and waiting for a better opportunity to show up. We've highlighted some of those better opportunities. So we could argue that perhaps there was one here. We could argue that there was perhaps one here, but obviously, 
it doesn't really make a lot of sense at this point here to do any business. I can't argue that there's a trade here, even though I can see quite clearly that the volume is quite explosive to the upside. I don't, I can't make a case for this one, simply because I can see that the volume and value doesn't tie up. So we're obviously quite keen to uh, explore this as a subject this afternoon, and obviously allow you guys to think about what we're seeing. Now this is down on a one minute chart, we've taken it up into a five minute chart as well, and we've been able to find some nice stories attached to these. And that's all we're doing in this classroom, is, is trying to find this idea, this concept of, um, this concept of value at price, this concept of volume and value at price areas, to try and allow you guys to make the highest possible probability every time you take a bit of business. And the exciting thing is, you can actually trade without price charts. That's what we did as an exercise with the interns. We did this exercise in this classroom several years ago. We'll do the same exercise again this afternoon to allow you guys to make um, similar type decisions. So uh, what else have we seen this morning outside of the German zoo? Not an awful lot. In the overnight session, the sentiment numbers out of Japan came in slightly firmer. The UK BRC retail sales disappointed at minus 0 0.2. The um, small business index in the US came out this morning uh, slightly softer at 98.2, nothing of any importance. The big ones of importance are this afternoon at half past one, just in 15 minutes time. We do have PPI numbers and core PPI numbers scheduled. They are both expected to be better than expected. Uh, better than prior, sorry, and uh, obviously dollar bulls, but the dollar bulls have been in command of today's business anyway, so no particular tradable opportunity there. But uh, really, the focus this afternoon is all on these uh, speakers. We've got uh, Powell, we've got Broadbent from the Bank of England, uh, we've got uh, Bailey, we've got uh, Macklem speaking from Bank of Canada, we've got uh, the 10-year bond auction at six o'clock as well. So uh, we do have the 10-year bond auction to pay very close attention to. But a lot of sound bites this afternoon following the PPI, so just be aware that it could be a little bit of a cheeky volatility spike every now and then. So be very careful. Remember the one paper, the one group of people who have insight into what they're going to be saying are the dealers, the people who are actually trading on the floor. These guys have a little bit of an insight, a little bit of a leaning, because it's their job to make sure they're informed to that degree so that they can start accumulating positions or otherwise disposing of positions if they know that there's going to be somebody saying something that could cause them to be uh, taken upside down, people like Goldman Sachs, for example. So that's something that you should be paying attention to. Watch those dealer inventories, try and trade with them rather than against them, and uh, just be careful this afternoon with the lack of data from half past one onwards, but a lot of sound bites as well as the bond 10-year auction guys watch just in case they try and build some sort of concession into this bond and at the moment they're not building anything into this bond it's been buy side only for me literally all day the buy uh, scratched out at plus one we've bought some more at uh, 12s and 13s it's gone back up to 19s again so we are making lots and lots and lots of money on the long side of treasury so well done everybody that's on board so welcome in guys uh, next data up is at half past in just 13 minutes and uh, I'll come back in for that, grab a bit of lunch before that, and uh, we'll get started.